Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. And may this day be very, but very profitable for each and every one of us. I would like to, to, to speak to you today concerning the need, the great need, the urgency, the imminent need of a person receiving the Holy Spirit. Because when we speak of receiving the Holy Spirit, to be sealed by the Holy Spirit or baptized with the Holy Spirit, it's not just about the miracles or the power to heal, to set people free and do wonders. No, it's not about you just having a different behavior either from those who don't have the Holy Spirit. No. When we speak of the baptism in the Holy Spirit, it's such a great, such a great need that there are no words. I don't even have words to express what I understand or my conscience concerning the need to have the Holy Spirit. When the Lord Jesus left the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Master, look at these stones, look at this building, because it wasn't just the temple of Solomon, but it was also the temples around the temple of Solomon, including the, the treasury, the house of the treasury. So, when he said to Jesus these words, Jesus said, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. And I just get to think, because everything that Jesus said happened has happened and will continue to happen. And when he said that one stone wouldn't be left upon another, Peter, John, and Andrew approached him when he got to the Mount of Olives and he was facing the temple there in the Mount of Olives. Then they asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled? Then Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, take heed, which means be careful, that no one deceives you. Take heed, that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I'm he, and will deceive many. I'm he, and will deceive many. So, he was worried about the situation of his followers the spiritual condition of his followers. Because if they didn't have the Holy Spirit, for sure they would also be deceived. And eventually they would succumb. They would also be like those stones of the temple, of the buildings that would be thrown down. And they were thrown down indeed because of the deceit of the last days. The deceit of the last days. This is the subject 
that Esther and I will be talking about later on at 9.30 by the TV temple. We are going to talk about this at 9.30 as well as there will be a repeat at 5 p.m. We are going to talk exactly about the subject that it's rare to hear about lately, but we cannot forget about it. Deceit, the deceit of the last days, the deceit of the final days. Jesus said, many will come in my name saying, I am he, meaning I'm a Christian, and they will deceive many. And then he also said, for false Christs, which means false Christians, and false prophets will rise and show signs and wonders to deceive. They will do signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. That's it, dear friend. You know that God calls everyone, right? Many are called. However, few are chosen. Amongst the chosen ones, amongst the called and chosen ones, there are also the elect. We are going to speak about this in the following days. But he said that false Christs and false prophets will rise and they will show signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So, how can we how can we be attentive and not allow ourselves to be deceived by the false Christians or the false prophets or the false evangelicals? How can we keep, protect, look after our own salvation. How can you keep? How, how will you know if Bishop Macedo isn't a deceiving false prophet, a false Christian? How will you know if I am of God or not? Tell me, how will you know? You don't live with me, isn't it? You don't live, you don't see me face to face, in person, isn't it? You don't live with me. You don't know how I am. You hear about me. You hear me praying. You see me trying to help people. You hear me preaching. But how about my attitudes? How about my behavior inside my house, my family? my work alongside my colleagues. You don't see it. However, however, those who have the same spirit that I do, that's where the difference is. Those who have the same spirit that God gave me, which is the Holy Spirit, then they know for sure that I am of God or that I am not by the way I express myself, by, by our attitude and behavior and so on. But those who have the Holy Spirit for sure can identify in me whether I am a deceiving person, a liar, or if I am a true person and that I want to help people really. Therefore, dear friend, how will you know who is who? Only the Holy Spirit. 
Only He can help you identify who is and who is not of God, those who are His and those who are not His. You can see, for example, Jesus said as well, besides what He said here concerning the false Christs or Christians and the false prophets and preachers, he said like this, pay attention how nice this is. He said, however, when he, when he, who is he? The spirit of truth, which means that there is the spirit or there are the spirits of lies, but there is the spirit of the truth of truth, which is the Spirit of Jesus, then He will guide you into all truth. Do you see it? If you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you are not going to know who is who, who is with the lies and who is with the truth, because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth is the spirit of the truth, which is the spirit of Jesus. So only He can open your eyes for you to see physically and consequently spiritually identify those who are and those who are not of God, including in their choices to get married, for example, to have friendship with, to socialize with. With the Holy Spirit, you have the light of God to separate the wheat from the chaff. You have the light, you have your, your mind enlightened, your understanding is enlightened to identify straight away who is who, especially because the Holy Spirit gives us spiritual discernment, discernment. Praise God, I have this discernment. I see, I've seen in people's eyes if they are, or if they are not of God, if they do or if they do not have the Holy Spirit, the, the look of a person that has the Holy Spirit is different. It's, it's, there's a brutal difference between the look of that person before having the Holy Spirit. When the person has the Holy Spirit, that countenance is transformed like from water to wine. They can also identify those who have the Holy Spirit. Those who have the Holy Spirit identify those who do, and they can also identify those who don't. So our daily war, our anguish, our spiritual anguish, is for those who still don't have the Holy Spirit. For example, I don't know if you are able to identify a person who has depression. I don't know. But just by looking in their eyes, just in their eyes, in their eyes, you can, you can see that the glow is different. There's no, there's no glow, actually. It's a, a, a sad look. It's a a look of anguish, of torment. It's a look of much, but much suffering, much anguish. That's the reality. And those who have the spirit of the Lord Jesus, they have a different look. You can look in their eyes and see that there is something different in any situation whether we in a, in a raining day, in a storm, or in a beautiful day, whether in a difficult moment with problems and hardships and wars, or in moments of calm. There's no other way. Jesus said, when 
He comes when the Spirit of Truth has come, which is the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth. By the way, I would like to, to invite you ladies, especially the ladies. Men as well are invited, but the meeting will focus today's meeting at 6 p.m. with Christiani, will focus on the ladies. Ladies are the ones who suffer the most. Men suffer as well, but, but women, and, but why do they suffer more? Because they are more sensitive, they are more emotional, they are more inclined to their heart, to their soul. They are less rational, even though they are intellectual, even though they are with, you know, they have a, a diploma, a degree, a high level. They are sometimes, uh, they have a PhD and masters and things of this nature. But still, they won't stop being a more emotional being, more inclined towards to their heart and, and feelings. And that's why the ladies suffer more, a lot more than the men. That's the reality. However, praise God. Don't be sad, ladies. Don't be sad, because Jesus, when he resurrected, the first person he showed himself to was Mary, a woman, a normal woman, an ordinary woman who used to be possessed by demons before. She was a vulgar woman, but Jesus manifested himself to her, not to his mother, Mary, whom gave birth to him, not even his aunties or his parents, let's put it this way. No, it was to a woman that nobody would care about. So tonight at 6 p.m., Christiani who has my spirit. <laughs> Christiane and Viviane have the same spirit that I do, the same spirit, just like Esther's. Praise God. So, Christiane, who also has my spirit, as a woman, she will talk to you, and I'm sure, I'm certain that she's going to help you because she understands well what it is to be a woman, which is something that I don't understand. I only understand what I know, who I am, but she understands who she is, a woman. She understands your pain, your anguish, your frustrations, your disappointments, your cries, your anguish. Yes, she understands it because she experienced this already herself in the past. Right after she got married, for 12 years, she had problems and I didn't know. I had discernment, but I didn't know. And I was waiting for the Holy Spirit to come and and would help her, and, and he did. And today, she's helping other women and passing on to them what she experienced. And therefore, you ladies have the privilege, you have the privilege of hearing from somebody filled with the Holy Spirit who will pass on to you not just information or stories from the Bible, but she will pass on to you the spirit that she has received from God. That's it. So that you can be strong, so that you can be resistant, so that you can be less emotional and more rational, so that you won't grown as you've been groaning. Today at 6 p.m. she will be holding this meeting for all the ladies, all of them. Actually, actually, we are going 
to let you participate even if you are far you are going to be able to participate as well live through our social media accounts and universe as well and you'll be able to let's say receive from what she has to give so today at 6 p.m that meeting that self-help meeting from godlywood and you are our guest as you as well gentlemen if you want to participate you may okay by the way even on instagram you are going to have the privilege to watch it, okay? But in the Temple of Solomon, live there and in person, in an environment that is proper, an environment that is clean, that is holy and sacred, an environment that you are not going to be hearing noises of phone ringing or people talking to other people on the phone. No, there people can't even enter with their phone they can't even go into the temple with their phone they have to put it aside and then later on they go and get it so there will be no interruption because we want people that in the temple to receive the spirit of god the spirit that we have received as well and we want you to have it not only you but also your entire household all of your family members okay today at 6 p.m in the temple of solomon which will be broadcast all over the world and whoever wants to participate amen all right so I'm going to end it here and later on I will be back. Esther and I will be here with you all. We'll be back here, not on Instagram, but through the TV temple and on Universe Video as well. May God bless you all and I hope that you won't forget that you have to take heed. Jesus said, take heed that no one deceives you. Take heed that no one deceives you. And only when you have the Holy Spirit, only when you are possessed by the Spirit of God, that you'll be able to keep ourselves safe and be protected from the deceit of this world. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.